I am the one with many names. Today it's Yeshua. Greetings. Greetings, Yeshua. It's an honor to have you in the room today. It is an honor to be here. Because all of you are very special. Is there any questions for me today? Mm, could you please just start with a message for the group if we may? Yes. This is a time of great disturbance across your planet. Many energies have changed. Many new things are coming. Many old things are passing away. You will notice changes in your thought processes you will notice changes in your attitudes and in your emotional status. This is not to be confused with who you are at this moment. It is just the change of many things. Now, be clear on this. It will not last. You will rise and move forward once again. Not to say that some of you are not going toward the positive side with these changes, but it seems more that most are moving down because they have not a grasp fully of the fourth dimension. <coughs> they have more of a grasp on Mother Nature's hold and the weather and the storms and the disturbances. And so, therefore, their third-dimensional outlook moves with the weather, shall we say. Now, I just want you to know that after this period, during where the storms are great and the energies still are greatly disrupted in Mother Earth, after this period, you will come into a calm and loving state. You will move forward in a way that you have not before, in a very unusually calm and sober way. This is an attribute to the fact that you are dedicated to moving forward. Thank you for that. Your love is nece necessary for the ascension to continue in a bright and shining way. Of course, there are those that will want to bring it to a stop or have it go backwards, but this cannot happen at this time. The flame is burning too brightly. Of course, they can slow it down, but you will not let that. Remember who you are. You are the front runners the beginners of the great ascension that must happen. You are those who are the beginnings and will not be forgotten. Are there any questions? Yes, we have a question here in the room. Michelle? Yes. Blessings, Yeshua. Um, oh, gosh. Your love is so big. <laughs> Um, yesterday, I would like to thank you for the message through a day. It seemed <laughs> that was um, my reality literally felt like it was breaking down. And Yeshua offered me a message that I was a great warrior and that it is safe to let it go. And I just sat with that while all of everything around me disintegrated. <laughs> so, it's much know. like today's message. The things that are disruptive will fall away. Oh. The calm will come. The peace will be a part of who you are, no matter what is around you and no matter what is happening. But continue. Yeah, so that was definitely the most bizarre experience to date in this, I guess, ascension. <laughs> um, so I wanted to ask you a technical question about your energy. Is it the same as Christ energy? 
I have many names. And yes, that is some of my energy is the Christ energy. But not all of it. Correct. So, for instance, if I'm working as a healer and I call for help when I ask for Christ energy, I'm not actually asking you per personally. But I may come anyway. Okay. And also, is holy fire the same energy holy or fire. different? Yes, I am in the holy fire. The holy fire is the Holy Spirit. That okay. is something a little different than the Christ energy. The Holy Spirit is the activation, the movement of all of the good healing energies that are around. He is the catalyst to many changes. And he is part of my energy. However, he is the very active and most dynamic part of who we are. The changer. The one that comes to initiate change and to cause healing and make things happen. I am an energy to bring messages and thought processes, but I also can bring change, but not in the same way. Do you understand? I got a message yesterday, so does that mean um, adding you to the mix of who I would call on for helping with healing is unnecessary because call you're on a message? We are all connected, and we are all here sometimes, and we are many places other times. But if you call us, we will be here. Thank you. Also, I'm curious um, if you, since things are getting very slippery and strange in my body and in my perception of time, um, yeah. is there anything you have to tell me that would <laughs> be helpful. Do not worry about your perception of time. <clears throat> As you know, time changes from one place to another. On this world, 24 hours is a day. On another world, 27 hours is a day. On another world, 30 hours is a day. And in some species, an hour is a day. Mm. In your time thought process, but not in theirs. Time is not equal in all parts of the galaxy. Time does not exist in the same way that you would want it to exist unless you bring your thought process of time to that area. Do you understand that? Well, First of all, so do not be concerned about how you're feeling about time because time does not exist in a real way whenever you're moving in the spirit. You see, when you feel the spirit and know that the spirit is with you, you will move at his time space. You will move in a way that is out of time, perhaps, and find yourself going forward or backwards in time. And that is confusing to some humans, but not to be concerned with it because it is what needs to be happening for the right things to occur in your thought processes. I know that needs clarification. Ask another question. <laughs> okay, so yesterday it felt like I was several levels removed from myself, and it took yes. extreme effort. Like, I was trying to push a car or something to type a sentence on my keyboard. So Perhaps it was not time for you to type a sentence on your keyboard. Perhaps it was time to let go and let the energies that be work in you, because there is reasons for this. Healing is who you are. You are part of a healing energy that is very strong. And this was guiding you to be different than what you wanted to be at that moment. To type a sentence is not what was necessary. You might have felt that it was necessary at this time. But what was necessary is that these energies worked in their different layers 
to make you stronger and bring you into a, a realm that you know is going to be a healing realm. You have been a great healer and have been working with healing energies and they are now coming to you in even a greater way than you can possibly imagine. Your intentions for healing will be greater than ever before. I try to do what I believe you did is see the perfection of a person, although it's difficult. Is that what you did? Is saw them I looked already at them with, I only saw the individual in their positive, beautiful, holy light of the soul. And that is what I was attracted to. I did not see any of the negative forms or energies within them. But I just restored the blueprint that is the, the part of the soul that is the beginning to perfect healing, to perfection as it was. So, as healers, we can also do that, as it yes. was quoted. <laughs> Absolutely. All this and more. It depends on your belief system as well. Believe that you can do it. It depends on the person that you are healing's belief system more because they must believe they are being healed. They must believe that there is the energy there to make them whole. But you see, sometimes the smallest amount of belief can work in the greatest way. Thank you for all of your help and all of your love. Um, I love you dearly. Spread it to well. all. I will. Thank you. Namaste. Namaste. If you choose that word. Which word do you prefer? I prefer no words except to experience that which is someone else's heart. Thank you. There is other thoughts out there. Yes, uh, Yeshua, does anyone in your room have a question? I do not know. Can we ask them? I have a question. This is John Bailey. Yes. Uh, do you have any guidance for me on the <clears throat> angels last night being guided to um, challenge <clears throat> some, some, of, uh, some of you? Angels are a magnificent creatures. They are created by God to perform specific acts in the, the universe. Many of them are created specifically for communication or for bringing news to the earth or for changing thought processes that might be confused. Yes. Learning about angels will definitely help with whatever it is that you are moving forward to do. That did not answer your question, though. I'm not sure what the question is. I feel like I'm supposed to ask a question, but I'm not sure what the question is I'm supposed to ask. I see. What it is about you right now is that there is an angel presence. There is an angel presence that you are aware of. And that it is become important that you know who it is and what it is doing. And these classes will answer those questions for you. Continue to move forward. Do not be afraid to question. Questioning is how you learn. Questioning is not because you have little faith. Questioning is because you need to learn more and you want to be stronger. Find the question that belongs to a greater answer of who you are. Nama talks that these classes should be shared with a broad audience, not just Rochester friends. Exactly. Many should know about angels and how they work and why they are there. Some are protectors, such as Raphael. Some are great messengers, like Michael. 
Some are great healers also, such as Gabriel, who heals the mind and body and soul, and Metatron, who guides and directs and is a leader of many angels. It is what it is. Find out who it is that is coming to you. I know I was trying to share that with you. Very well. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Nebi, would like to ask a question? Yes, uh, thank you. Hello, uh, brother. Good afternoon, evening, or morning, wherever you are. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I have a question about uh, the relevance of your incarnation as uh, Joshua and as David for your life as uh, Yeshua. Do you have to experience war to know peace? I had to experience everything to know humanity. I had to experience the good and the bad. Not that I was bad or became bad but I had to experience to know how to help man. You have to understand that without the experience, how can you help? Without knowing what feeling you are, you are experiencing, how can I help you? How can we know what war is like if we are not involved in it? How can we know what sexuality is about if we do not have it or experience it? How can we know what anger is or doubt or jealousy without experience it and knowing for sure how to bring you out of it? You see, it was not a matter of becoming it but experiencing it for the sake of mankind so that you could be helped through many other beings in the universe and through the Spirit of God. You see, he was created unto himself. He always existed. How is he supposed to know what his creation felt unless he came to you and experienced it with you in some way? He loves you that much that he sent someone to experience it. A spirit, a body, an emotion. All these things that are connected to humanity and to every species. He would like to know how it is that you experience your life. How can it be that he brings you joy if he does not know what sorrow is? It is impossible for him to be in the knowledge of all things that are human without being part of it. Does that make sense to you? So yes, therefore, sir. when you read about myself on your planet, having been pure and done no sin, how impossible is it for me to know what you experienced if I had not been part of who you are. It was not that I had to become low, but I had to become human in all ways. Yes, um, <clears throat> I understand. Um, my question is about where I live, where you used to live. Um, how much yeah. more war must we endure? When, when can we choose peace in a way that's the most pragmatic way? Your people have free will and the peoples around you are the 12 tribes of Israel which have broken off into different religious sects. The Sikhs, the Jews, the Shiites, there are many of you there. Do you understand that? Many of the heads of the twelve tribes have brought themselves into one understanding and will not change their minds. They are stubborn and they are without reason except 
of their pride. When there is this much pride, war will continue because they will not change. They teach their children prejudice. They teach their children war. And they teach their children jihad, which is a shame because jihad should not exist. So therefore, as each has their own free will and is brought up each generation to believe that they are the most correct and that they cannot change for any reason, there will be war. Do you mean that the, the Sunnis and the Shiites and the Israelis and Palestinians are all part of the same 12 tribes? Except with their own twist on what they believe to be the very truth of the matter. If they were to open their eyes and see the truth, they are all worshipping the same God and these small differences are just that. They make no spiritual difference in many ways. I do not know how to say it any better, except you are all one, but you refuse to be one. I understand. Uh, well, thank you very much. Uh, I pass the mic. Yes. Was there a voice I heard? Yeah, sure. Is there someone else with a question there? They feel like their God is different than someone else's God, and their God is better than your God, and then it's like the number one cause of death in the world is religion. Correct. Crazy. It is that many people believe that the Israeli God is different than the Christian God, is different than the Buddhist God, is different than the Islamic God. All gods are the same. God is one. He does not split off to start new religions. Humanity does that. Humanity believes that they are so correct because they can resonate with a, an energy and then after the resonation has passed, they make rules and regulations on how to deal with it because they don't know how to live in it. You have to live in it and not organize it. Each of you has your own perception of God. Each of you has your own inspection of spirituality and your own reflection on it. Does that make it wrong that your vision of your spirituality and who you are in God's eyes is different than the next person? No, he has given you free will to understand your spirituality in connection with him in a very personal way. Why would it be the same as everybody else's connection? It will always be different. It will always be personal. And it will always be individual in your eyes. Do not judge other people's experience of God. Their perception of God is just as valid as yours because it is the way he has come to them, created them, and helped them to bring the message of who he is to them. He does not want anyone else to tell you who he is. He wants you to experience who he is, so that you may be perfect in his eyes and he may be the one that you look to to fulfill this being that you call yourself. There is no other person that you should look to to see who you are. Do you understand this? Many times people do not understand who they are. They look for many meanings in many different places. But if they were to look inside, they know exactly who they are. They know the feelings that they have. They know which of these feelings have come from the outside world. And they know which feelings 
have come from a greater place. And therefore, that is the beauty of God with each of you because you are all exactly how he made you. And to change that is to change your perception of God and his perception of you. You do not want that. Do you understand that? Continue. I am sorry if I got a little excited. But these well, things, I love you so much individually that to want to believe what somebody tells you about yourself makes me a little upset because you should tell them who you are. They shouldn't tell you who, the, who you are. It's wonderful news. Thank you. Is there another yeah. question behind you? I believe there is. Well, we've been taught as a society to trust the external experts, which in the case of religion is, you know, priests mm -hmm. or religious leaders to tell us what to feel about God. Yes. And they're telling us essentially don't trust yourself, trust what we say about you, trust the institutions. And that is the problem. You are correct. All your life you have been told to trust the institutions. Why? Because they give you guidance and structure. Does not God give the body structure? Does not God give the emotions structure? Does not God give your thoughts and minds a structure to understand who you are? Of course, these outside religions will try to tell you exactly who you are. And to go to these is not wrong. But you must understand that if they are not speaking to your soul, there are many things that they are saying that you should not connect with. And you will know that in your heart. Many people take on the, the religions because they have nothing inside that they feel is valid. Find your validity. Find who you are. You do not have to accept blindly the things that other people say. Even though... It is what is part of the third dimension. Others will be telling you and in trying to influence you, try to make you into or mold you into something. Mold yourself. Have the self-understanding and love. You see, you must have a self-love because God loves you. What is the soul? The soul is God. God loves you. You love yourself. You love God. This is where the, the relationship is built. Listen to your heart, because he made that in a very special way, so that you know who you are. If you are someone of great creativity, and someone tells you, you don't have a chance of being a great creator. Should you believe that? Should you believe the outside forces? I know, I'm only, they might say, I'm only trying to protect you. I'm only trying to protect you from the world. How can someone else protect you from who you are? Who you are is protected by God. The world cannot protect you. And you cannot be protected by any one individual or any group of individuals. Not in the spiritual sense. The spiritual sense is who you are and God protects you. And you can bring that protection of God into your life. But who is going to protect the soul? Only you can protect your soul and God. Others may try to protect your soul, but it's yours. It's like them trying to protect 
a ray of light. How can they how can they understand who you are in your fullness, in your brightness, in your creativity, in your being of God creation? They can only understand their own light and their own God within. And sometimes they don't even understand that. But let it flow. Let it shine. Let it be who it is. It is not that you're going to stop living. God will continue you in the path that he sees fit. Now, of course, some people seek guidance. But that is fine if you're seeking guidance that will resonate with your own heart and soul. But do not let it be forced upon you. If you seek it, that is different than them trying to manipulate it within you. Does that make sense to you? Seek out who you are. You can see maybe part of yourself in other beings that are godlike. That's all right. A reflection of yourself is always good. will let you see your face in another person's eyes. That is always a wonderful thing. Sharing your God in a way that is not intrusive. Love each other. That's sharing God. That's sharing the Spirit. Give to each other. That's sharing God. If they cannot accept what you have to give, accept that that is who they are. Do not look at it as a negative thing. Do you understand what I am saying? I am coming down to the purest part of the human soul. You, as a human soul, connected to God. Rise with Him. Seek who you are. Build your God light and shine it out. Thank you so much. We have another question here in the room. Uh, Will, would you like to go next? Greetings, my friend. Much love, Yashua. Much this is love. Will. Hello, Will. Thank you so much for your friendship, your guidance. I am always with you. <laughs> you know it. Um, so I have a question regarding teaching and healing. Yes. The balance of the ego intention and allowing. At times I have trouble yes. finding the exact words that are necessary, but um, please, please share. I would love to hear it in your words. Yes. Teaching is a sharing of your spirit, your thoughts, and what you have learned as an individual, what is out there that you have brought into yourself and have made part of who you are. You are sharing who you are when you are a teacher. You are sharing the beauty of your understanding. Now, this is a personal and beautiful thing that you are sharing, and it's individual to you, and many may relate to it. Many may understand that you are sharing of yourself and the experiences that have made you the beautiful person that you are. Do you understand what I'm saying here? And when that comes out, they can relate to it or not. They may want to relate to it and cannot. Or they may just completely relate to it in some way. And that is a beauty. That is sharing your love, your spirit with another person. Teaching and healing is the same you have brought the healing energy into your body. You know and believe it's there. It's part of who you are. It's part of the God spirit that is you. And you want to share God in his most beautiful healing aspect with others. Now, if they let that happen, it is 
absolutely glorious because it opens the eyes of the soul with God to know that healing is possible in the third dimension and opens the eyes of how powerful God really is and it becomes an individual part of who you are. Any healing will change a person. Do you agree? Healing changes you. Why? Because it is a gift from God. Do not give humans the credit. They may be the tools that carry the gift or create, help create the gift. But God is the actual healer, is he not? So therefore, the creator in you has touched the creator in someone else. Blessings for that. Most loving. And it, what happens when someone is healed? They learn more about who they are. They are a newer creation in some senses. They have changed from a negative feeling or position or energy into a greater person within with God's help, with you as a tool to bring that energy to them and have them accept it as a gift from God. It's a beautiful thing. All the energies that help heal are connected to the God Spirit because did he not create everything? Of course he did. And therefore healing is part of who you are and part of who you can share yourself with. You can share that God portion of yourself with someone else and help them to begin more of who they are in a greater way and a more whole way they become more whole with healing and so therefore they know God more. Let them figure that out with their God. Thank you so much. Did that answer your question? Well, it, it spoke to the, the role of the ego in allowing. Yes. But uh, I'd like you to expand more on intention while setting your intention as a healer before a session yes for specific items but not getting too attached to it and not being too specific because the mm. spirit knows more about how to heal than exactly I where know. does the intention come from it because the intention comes from who you really are in god not who you really are in yourself. Because in yourself, if you were to look in yourself when you were born, you did not see a healing portion of you. But when you learn who God is and who the Spirit is, and, and, and there are those that do not know God that are healers, but that's still the God within them. Do you understand that? The intention is God given. Your who you are is who you intend to be <laughs> and God intends you to be and when you are giving an intention of healing you're gi giving the intention of God being shared. Does that answer your question? Absolutely but it's um, when you're sitting down for a healing session it setting your intention isn't. I mean, you you hear the the needs of the of the yes. client, and right. and you connect to them, and you connect to them, and you you feel it, and then you. It, to me, it's like praying. It is. And what are you doing when you're praying? You're connecting to God. 
Absolutely. And so forget about all the thought process around intentions and look at it for what it really is. It is a connection. You are intentionally connecting God to this whatever you're intending. You're intentioning to heal. So God is that part of that connection. You're intentioning to emotionally uplift. God is part of that intention. But it is also part of the God in you because is not the God in you the God you call on for healing? Of course. And is not the energy of healing who you are in reality, who you have discovered that you are in God and in third dimension? They are all connected. And I understand why you might have a problem with sitting down in a third dimensional view of it. But remember, it goes beyond the third dimension always. Healing is beyond the third dimension in the spiritual sense. Now, if you go to the doctor to be healed, that's a third dimensional thought process. But when you're intending to use Reiki or Holy Fire, is that not a spiritual attachment? Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much for your insight. I love you so much. And do not overthink it. Just let it happen. Because that is the problem with... All dimensions of species, they tend to overthink. They want to, they want to break it down into the smallest particles so that they can understand it, feel it, understand it in the sense that it is who you are. Make it an understanding that if it is part of you, that's the most part of the understanding that is necessary. That is the most important part of the understanding because the intellect does not enter into the spiritual connection. That's correct. Thank you so much. I have uh, new ways of explaining it. I appreciate it. Much love. Much love. Oh, thank you so much. Now we have a question from a chat. It's a person who could not make it into the room. Very Jasmina. Nice. Oh, I know her, yes. Oh, great. She says, is there any messages for me? Yes. Let your soul and heart expand. I know that you have done that many times. But it is important for this time right now, as the, the earth energies are moving, to, to look at your heart in a most beautiful and wonderful way. Your heart is not coming out as far as you would like it to. You're not expressing yourself in the way that is the most beautiful. And you are dynamic and beautiful. And I just see that you should just let the heart come out. Just let the beauty of your soul shine forth. Do not be afraid. I know in most human situations, people are afraid to be themselves in social situations. They're afraid to let their soul shine through, their spirit shine through, who they really, really are. Because when they get out into the society, it is all a game. It is all an energy and a manipulation, and it's all trying to get done what they need to be done. But you know what? It can only be done perfectly if you are who you are when you're doing it. And if that does not connect with others, then it should not. But let me tell you this. 
The way that you are in your truth about yourself will always affect everyone around you. If you are not being yourself, if you are not being genuine, and if you are not loving yourself, it will show through. And when you do show that you love yourself, and that God is part of who you are, you don't have to say, God is part of who I am. You do not have to announce it, because it will show. And they will like you and respect you more even though they may treat you worse because they can't manipulate you the way they want to, but that respect is going to be greater. Does that make sense to you? And your creativity and your work ethic and who you are as an individual will be there in a very different way. Thank you, Yeshua. Now, is there anyone else in the room there with you that may have a question? Can we ask? I think it, my time has come to leave. Okay, thank you so much for your time, and it was just a pleasure having you here with us today. I enjoyed speaking to you and loving you with who I am. Because who I am is love. Much love to you. Bless you all. There is another who wants to come through. 